Williams. Mid uh, good morning. Welcome to Alexium's mid-quarter update. Uh, today, uh, Billy Blackburn, the company's chief executive officer, will be providing an update across the company's activities and in particular uh, updating investors on an initiative that the company has been working on um, for a number of years, uh, which is now starting to move towards full commercialization. Uh, with that, I will hand over to Billy and thank you again for joining. Thank you, Simon. Uh, good morning and good evening, everyone, uh, depending on where you are in the world. We really appreciate you joining. Uh, just, just a few notes, a little housekeeping up front here. Uh, we made a commitment to the investors and uh, our employees and, and everyone involved in Alexium to give updates more regularly throughout uh, the last fiscal year and then going forward into the next fiscal year. So we're going to keep up the cadence of doing these every six to eight weeks at the latest, uh, typically or land around six weeks. And that's really dependent on when we do half year, mid year, excuse me, half year, full year and 4C reports. And if they're too close together, we'll uh, we'll just leave it to those formal updates, uh, but any material updates, large ones, we will break in uh, and then give interim updates along the way. Uh, and our goal in these updates, especially the interim ones, is not to report things that are redundant to those formal updates, but to really focus on new activities and forward progress uh, and just give you guys a view into, you know, developments at the company and things that are moving us forward with our goals. With that, I'll get into the update. Tonight, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the strategic plan that we've been in. Uh, I'm coming up on two years in September. And last year, early in the calendar year, we rolled out a new strategy. And we've been refining that since I've been here. And uh, we wrap our business plan around that and budget. Uh, but generally, the strategy is the same, and we're executing along that. So I'll give an update there. Uh, for FY24, uh, we're going to do a showcase of uh, a product portfolio tonight on flame retardants, and then we'll give a little bit of uh, a sneak peek at the FY25 plan, which we'll go through in full length in the next update in six weeks. <clears throat> so the strategy at Alexium, uh, it does remain the same, and, and, and I always get a kick out of this. It's to grow and diversify revenue, which on its face is quite simple, uh, but it's nuanced behind that. It's to grow and diversify our revenue in our core market embedding where most of the company's investments and technologies have been positioned over the last several years. And it still remains our uh, largest percentage chance for significant growth in the short term uh, outside of the military. And then secondly, uh, moving our technologies into adjacent markets. And, and by adjacent markets, just to be crystal clear, we mean anything non-betting that we're targeting. Uh, so grow and diversify our revenue in the betting market, we, we must break new accounts because we have to address the over-concentration with one major brand uh, in North America. And historically, we've been concentrated in that brand. Uh, we've been over-concentrated in PCM sales. And we also been overly concentrated in North America. And we've really made progress uh, along the strategy in all three of those areas and diversifying leading to what we believe is gonna be significant revenue, never to go over the near term. So the whole point is to break up what we're doing in the betting market uh, and, and really leverage the relationships there to grow. And again, our technologies are well suited for that market. And the second leg of the strategy is to grow and diversify revenue in adjacent markets. And to do that, we have to break new markets with our existing technologies. And that's the fastest path to revenue with what we already have, moving it to new spaces. Behind that, we have to modify the technology to create new market entries. And uh, we'll speak to that as well. But that's new technology into new markets. And then focus only on the fastest routes to new large reoccurring revenue. So with our technology, especially in the thermal management and FR areas, there, there's so many things in the market you could chase that if you try to do too much, you end up watering down the efforts and really not getting to any meaningful results. So one of the things since I've been here, the focus has been to bring focus and to really focus on less at one time. Uh, so you'll hear us in the coming months talk about uh, primary focuses, core focuses. You'll hear terms like parking lot, you know, we use the term parking lot when we park a project that we know is good, but we don't have the resources at the moment to chase it. 
Uh, but so we're going to get through what we're working on currently, deliver results there, then move on to the next thing. And, and that's an operational discipline we're deploying at Alexium now. Uh, and it seems to be working um, and it's evident in the pipeline. So short term objectives for FY25 is to create sustained month over month cash positive results. And we believe we can achieve this in our core market. So leg one of the strategy. Then beyond that, in the medium to longer term objective is significant growth and sustained profits. So combining both of these legs of the strategy, excuse me, <clears throat> if we run these in parallel, uh, that should lead to sustained growth for years to come. So really more of a, a picture of that, uh, getting into a little more detail. Uh, you know, the first piece of that is to maintain our PCM sales to bedding. That's foundational. The lion's share of the sales for 2024 were PCM sales in the bedding. We're still in that concentration in the bedding market with PCM in North America, but we've made significant strides uh, to growth beyond that and diversifying it. Next is to grow, find, grow, grow and diversify the revenue in the bedding market. And that means selling more than PCM. That's uh, Delcool, our uh, dehumidifier fabric, Eclipsis, our heat dissipation, non-woven material. And then also FR. We've had a lot of uh, new demand for FR over the last six months and, and even more so in the last few weeks. Uh, and then behind that is growing and diversifying the revenue in adjacent markets, non-bedding. So if we can execute the three of these with the primary focus in the near term in the core market of betting, that's going to lead to us hitting the results uh, this year and then continued growth, uh, building momentum beyond that. So really uh, the pathway we've been on since I joined, uh, I won't belabor the FY23 and, and, and just for everyone, we will post this to the website and to the ASX. Uh, you'll have access to this. So, if you come back and read it later and want to send in questions, we're happy to address them if we don't capture that tonight. Uh, but for FY24, it was diversify. And uh, over the last several months, we have added new team members to the sales team. And we've added some advisor and marketing uh, horsepower to the team to drive our products into the market and help us break new ground. The culture continues to turn at Alexium, and uh, I'm just happy to report that pretty much everyone at Alexium understands that we all serve the customer. We are all in sales, no matter your role. doesn't matter if you're a chemist, an accountant, or an actual salesperson. We all serve the customer. Uh, growth is us diversifying. <clears throat> it was a 70-20-10, if you guys recall, in the past. And that was 70% in the betting core market, 20% into some adjacents, and 10% into some breakthrough markets. We're now shifting, and we're not quite there, but we, we will be in 25, shifting to a 40%, 20%, 40% focus. And that's, that's in, you know, in general over the average, but that is us now keeping a focus in the betting market and delivering on our existing products and technologies but also running a parallel path to innovate and break new ground with those technologies into new spaces. Uh, that involves core bedding market, Alexacool, Biocool, Delcool, and Eclipsis uh, for thermal uh, management in the bedding space. Continue down the path with our flame resistant nylon cotton fabrics for the military. And we will be positioning that for workwear in FY25. Commercializing eclipses for tactical gear. That was a miss this year, uh, but it's not off the list for us. It was in the parking lot for a little while while we worked through some improvements to the material and the go to market plan, which really revolved around adding the sales team and some horsepower to start chasing public dollars and going after large population bases for that tactical gear. So we will be renewing the energy around that sales effort uh, in the coming month. Uh, and then commercializing Eclipsis and FR and new markets. And that was shoes, cold chain, and workwear. Again, none of those are off the drawing board for us, uh, but we did park them. And you'll hear a lot of why we did that as I expand tonight on what's been going on recently. But we've shifted focus to some near-term opportunities, and those had to wait a little while uh, until we circle back to them to, uh, to pick up those growth strategies. Operations, we have secured the supply chain to ensure resiliency. 
Uh, we're too deep on key raw material supplies and uh, too deep on tolling operations. And as we move to make Alexaflam again, uh, we will have a secondary production site for Alexaflam. And that's that's one of the more complex chemistries that we make that requires synthesis and reactors. And um, it's less of a formulation and more of a reaction uh, chemistry. So a shorter list of people around the world, especially in the Southern United States that can make that. Uh, we've now got two. Uh, and so we, we believe we've got that ready uh, should we need to scale up quickly to respond to a military request. Uh, financial, cash, and commercial discipline. On the cash side, we've been very disciplined with our expenditures. Cash flow positive, not quite there yet, but on approach. And then funding, we were successful in 24, recapitalizing the business. Uh, we now have a clean balance sheet. Uh, we have uh, ample cash to deliver the goals we need in the near term. And um, it's a new day. We're focused on execution. And uh, thank you to all that participated in that recapitalization. So going forward into FY25, uh, we will bolster our operations team and let the sales teams, uh, the new executives mature into their role. Uh, I'm likely going to be adding another by the end of this calendar year. Um, on the operations side, it's it's really simple. As we pile on sales volume, operations has to beef up to be able to support uh, the increased sales volumes. And we are tolling uh, at a number of sites around the Southern United States and a few out uh, towards Colorado and Ohio. And that's gonna require more bandwidth to manage all that activity. Uh, again, the culture is one team, everyone's culture customer centric. And we believe going forward as we hit these milestones, momentum comes from success breeding success. Uh, again, we'll be in that 40-20 focus, uh, focusing more on globalization of the products. Uh, and we have been successful moving uh, to new developments in the Australia, New Zealand region. And uh, we're in development with a few different brands down there right now. And it's interesting. We've learned that a lot of those brands, um, you know, the Australia, New Zealand region is, is only a certain size. It's, it's not big. And we certainly want to capture uh, those sales in that region. But we're learning the players in that region. Actually, their bigger part of their business is in Asia. And there's a large volume to, to be had in Asia by, play, by basically partnering with the brands and, and innovating and offering them upgrades to their products coming out of that region into Asia. Uh, so we've had some, uh, some gains there. Uh, commercializing key product platforms in international markets. Uh, in the short term, we believe that's going to be phase change materials, microencapsulated phase change materials, uh, Eclipsis and Del Cool in the bedding space. Uh, but we have had some interest in FR uh, non-bedding. Not many of those other countries are using FR in mattresses, but it would be FR in workwear and other applications in home goods. Uh, and then expanding our product application range into larger markets. And, you know, that could be outdoor, outdoor apparel, shoes, automotive, electronics. Um, it's a pretty It's a pretty big market where we can start to play from there. Uh, and then we're going to leverage our scale as we grow. And then financially, that's material growth and earnings, cash flow, and share price should result from all of that activity. So the strategic plan from 24 and update, we did build out the sales team. Uh, we've added direct marketing expertise and we've bolstered our product development. Um, we, we've had a new director join the team who's a former CEO uh, in the thermal management space and was very successful and has a track record of moving thermal management technologies into multiple markets. Uh, so he's joined the board. You, got, you would have seen the announcement uh, over the last week. Uh, he's also advising the team on, on where to start placing the markets and how to place the technologies and how to position them. Uh, so a lot of a, a lot of depth of knowledge has been added from that move. Two new sales execs on board, uh, direct marketing and, and to run marketing campaigns. And when I mean direct marketing, I don't mean branding and websites. I mean direct marketing campaigns, canvassing actual targeted buyers of our products, generating leads for our sales teams to pursue. So classic sales funnel activity from marketing. Uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned, the PCM industry expert has now joined the team. For the culture, again, sales and marketing centric, we're highly motivated to drive the full commercialization of all of our technologies. So we're very excited to have these new team members on board so they can support the strategy and they know the phrase well, which I've already quoted. Uh, but 
really what I would tell you the step change for me. And, and I've been the interim sales manager as we grow and before we add another layer of management and all of the overhead that goes with it. Uh, and I work very closely with our sales team every day. Um, and it's a brand new day at Alexium. I can tell you that uh, these guys are very professional, very motivated, and they're already getting results. So growth and the diversifying of our focus activities, uh, all these key initiatives are on track and progressing. So we kept the focus on our short term games and betting. Uh, well, we've disciplined, we've been disciplined around new developments and not in non betting markets. Uh, so you'll hear that as a lesser you know, percentage of what we report and you'll hear a heavy, heavier dose of betting updates. And that's because we are still focused on that core market. Uh, but we know that we have to run a parallel path, betting being a higher percentage and the parallel path of innovating a lesser percentage. But you have to do both. And to do that, it takes discipline because it's a small company and there's a lot of intertwined activity going on. So we're putting in processes right now and, and generally firewalls between the more pragmatic side of the business, which is sell it, manufacture it, ship it, bill it, collect it away from the innovative side where it's easy to get uh, involved in the innovation <clears throat> and, and kind of fall in love with new ideas and start chasing those and take your eye off the primary focus. So we're encouraging Dr. Brookins and his team to innovate and do all the R&D work to continue to prove out technologies and advancements with our existing products into adjacent markets while the rest of the team needs to focus on delivering short-term success from our proven product suites. So year-over-year -year growth in our core market uh, will come from Alexacool, Biocool, Delcool, Eclipsis, and then adding new sales from our FR suite, AlexaGuard and Alexa Shield. Uh, should have mentioned there Alexa Flam as well, which is the legacy F FR uh, product. We have made significant progress with the military, and uh, that is moving uh, moving along the testing track now. I'll give further updates later. Uh, we've commercialized Eclipsis for tactical gear, uh, but we'll be making a new sales push with a different strategy, go-to-market strategy for that going forward. Uh, PCM has been commercialized. Eclipsis, we are just now going live uh, in, a, in a mattress for a TV network uh, that we'll show in July. But that didn't happen in FY24, just, just on the front end of 25. Um, and the new FR placements are going into the market as we speak. From the operations side, we've secured the supply chain. Uh, we've added a textile engineer to the team over the last year. He has been uh, integral in us locking down textile suppliers and places to make our products. Uh, and, you know, we're looking for folks that have you know, financial health and longevity and capacity to meet our growth goals. Uh, so when we select them now, we're going through a little more rigor up front to qualify the vendors. Uh, and part of this has been driven by the, the betting market's been soft since early 2022. Other markets have been soft in that window as well. And there's been a lot of pressure on U.S. textile capacity and there's been a lot of exits of companies in there. So there's a bit of a kink in the uh, supply chain on the textile side. So we've been very diligent in finding folks that are solid, secure, and financially uh, up to the challenge that also have the capacity to scale up with us. Uh, key, key raw material backups. Uh, again, like I said, we've gone two, sometimes three deep for long supply chain materials with long lead times. And specifically looking at anything that might come under a trade war or tariff uh, and become difficult again to get into the states. And then adding new toll manufacturers for our FR products is also uh, becoming one of the main pushes right now. And uh, for Alexa Flam, we found significant cost reductions in that supply chain, uh, thus making it more competitive and, and improving our position for the military apparel and workwear. Uh, financially, Commercial discipline, we, uh, we are right in the middle of that now. And cash, we're managing a very tight um, expense column. And then cash flow positive is forthcoming in FY25. Uh, we have a very robust pipeline right now with ample opportunities, enough to deliver the short-term results that we'll be forecasting and budgeting. And again, the new team members are on board. And then funding, uh, 
after the recapitalization, we've been very judicious with the funds and we continue that practice going into FY25. And really the majority of the funding will be adding the key personnel to execute the plan uh, to deliver results. Um, we don't have any major capital expenditures planned. You know, as, as Alexium runs a fairly capital uh, light model and we use uh, total manufacturing and the capacity and capital investments of others to make our products. Here's the product suite. Uh, not going to focus much tonight on our microencapsulated PCMs, Alexicool and Biocool. Those are in our core market area. <clears throat> Delcool and Eclipsis also are uh, significant opportunities for growth. And we've had a little bit of a slow start to getting those to the market, but we've got a lot of interest right now and we're continuing to work the projects. Many of them are in a long development cycle for mattresses. And you know those are anywhere from 18 to uh, 32 month cycles. Uh, we're in those in a few areas in the pipeline now that won't be realized really until second half of next calendar year. So I won't spend much time there. Uh, tonight, we're going to showcase our flame retardant technologies, uh, Alexaflam, Alexaguard, and we're going to roll out a new product here in a moment. So a little background just uh, for our new friends joining us. And for those that have been with us for a long time, you'll you'll be quite familiar with Alexaflam. It's, it's, uh, it's the legacy flame retardant technology of Alexium, and it goes deep back into the company's roots and was really the early product for targeting military apparel, uh, namely the Air Force back in the original days. Um, but it's a flame retardant for cotton and cotton rich fabric blends. Uh, so formulations that use Alex Flam offer great flame retardancy. And the key with this one and why we position it for those types of fabric blends is the wash durability. Uh, some of the applications for the military, we have to hit wash cycles is as many as 50 wash cycles uh, and still pass the stringent burn tests. And workwear is very similar. The difference between the military apparel and workwear is actually workwear has to be even more wash durable because many of the industrial laundering scenarios for the workwear are using harsh chemistries to wash those products so they can get them back to plant workers and steel mills and chemical factories and refineries. So they work in very harsh environments. So um, they use a lot of chemistry to, to get the oil and other chemicals off of those uniforms and back to the workers in clean form. So uh, wash durability is something you're going to hear a lot about. We've had some nice breakthroughs on that. Uh, just as a reminder, we did pass the more stringent test for the military last fall, which is the Pyroman. We passed the four second Pyroman burn test, um, which has led to in even more development work with the military. Uh, behind that, uh, our other legacy product is Alexa Guard, and that's uh, a flame retardant emulsion. It's used on 100% synthetic, which is uh, mostly polyester fabrics. Uh, it's an aqueous based solution. It's free from halogen, antimony, formaldehyde, phosphate salts, and it's basically a non-toxic material um, that's ahead of the regulatory curve uh, for a lot of the substances that are being banned out of FR chemistries. We originally developed it as a complementary product to Alexaflam, um, but we found other placements for it. It's also a very nice softener in other FR chemistry. So it, it's got a dual purpose for its flame resistant nature and for softening. And most F FR treatments actually stiffen products and make them more stiff. This one does the opposite, giving it a bit of a competitive advantage. So in this uh, past fiscal year, we made great progress uh, on our FR opportunities. The, F the Alexiflam developments were focused on advancing our FR nylon cotton fabric. You'll hear often FR NICO nickname and the military loves their acronyms. So we've fallen right into that with them. Uh, but for military apparel fabric and early stage work on, we're adapting the chemistry for wash durability for workwear. And the workwear space is a very large, but very competitive space, but we believe we have uh, a nice offering there, uh, not only being ahead of the regulatory curve, but from a cost standpoint, and certainly from a performance standpoint, especially with the recent developments in wash durability. So we're now adapting that for multiple fabric types, more than just nylon cotton, but other cotton poly blends, uh, rayons, and, and other types of materials that are used widely across the workwear space, also home goods as well. 
Uh, and again, we keep our eye on the basically what's being proposed to be banned. And it's been uh, very active in, in over recent years in the United States of what can and cannot be used in consumer products. And there's been, you know, uh, it, it goes back to PFAS, it goes back to formaldehyde and other toxic species that are bad for humans, essentially. And that's created an onslaught of uh, looking at every type of molecule that's used in these and a lot of testing and a lot of questions. So there are some materials being proposed out there that aren't quite passed yet, uh, but uh, we've gone ahead and started working on formulas to get us ahead of that. And that's what brings us to the third product, which is Alexa Shield. So for the FR product suite, Alexaflam, Again, uh, organophosphorus, aqueous flame retardant for cotton and cotton-rich blends, wash durable, and great old warm weather, lower cost fabrics for military apparel and workwear. Alexi Guard Intermediate, and that's the uh, original Alexi Guard. That's a robust uh, FR chemistry. We use it as a component in our microencapsulated PCM to offset any fuel load that PCM might add to mattresses. Uh, it also acts as a softener in that. Uh, it's also uh, in our Alexa flam, which is wash durable, and it's utilized often as a dual purpose component for flame resistance and softening. Again, Alexa Guard FP, not very creative, but finished product, but that's specialty formulation <clears throat> using the intermediate, and it has robust applications in uh, FR barrier fabrics for mattresses. And, and I'll pause there because we've seen a shift uh, in demand, and we're highly active on a number of projects right now in the bedding industry. And what happened that really created the shift over the last 12 months is fiberglass was banned from use in mattresses in the United States. Uh, and they're on the clock now to remove fiberglass from all the beds in production. So we're in a bit of a foot race with a lot of customers right now to treat other components of the mattresses and the textiles using the mattresses to make those effective FR barriers that are fiberglass free. And, and that played right into our hands with our chemistries uh, because obviously we use no fiberglass and we were already ahead of many of the uh, banned substances and regulations coming down the pipe. So we've gotten a lot of recent demand around FR in mattresses and mattress foundations. Um, so with that, this formulation that we're doing, the FP, uh, it's an add-on to the bare fabrics. Uh, and those fabrics, typically the ones that are called FR are typically using rayon or other inherently FR properties. We've found that many of them have marginal performance. Uh, they will typically have a certain failure percentage in the mattresses that they're willing to accept, but it's really too close uh, to the brink, too risky. And now that they've taken fiberglass out, uh, it's put the risk uh, profile much higher. So we're active in a lot of fabric projects right now in mattresses and mattress foundations. And uh, if, you, if you're like me from the good old United States, we call the foundations box springs. Uh, and then Alexa Shield, we rolled out over the last nine months and it was in our development queue in our lab. Uh, and the challenge was for us to come with a formulation that was free of any current or proposed banned substances. And uh, so we do new, now have a new formulation, Alexiguard, and there are some proposed bans coming down the pipe that uh, would ban other substances in widely used FR and Alexiguard is well ahead of that. Uh, and we are working on an active project for a large placement for it, which I'll detail in a moment. Lex Flam, uh, there's two main channels where we're pushing that into the market now. Uh, as you've heard a lot about over the years, military FR fabric. Uh, we're continuing our efforts to develop the cost effective warm weather nylon cotton fabric for the military. Uh, Lexium has continued to partner uh, with the military, but we're now well aligned around our supply chain with well trusted US based military textile producers who are manufacturing readiness. And we're running small trials and getting fabrics ready for more testing and another round of Pyroman with the enhancements that I mentioned earlier for Alexa Flam uh, around the wash durability. And then going back for another round of testing where we'll cut and sew uniforms and burn more uniforms in the second half of this calendar year. Uh, we do expect this to be a large opportunity. It is competitive. So, you know, oftentimes we're very careful about forecasting and budgeting around the military. 
because it will come to a competitive public money bid. Uh, but the opportunity for us on the conservative side in the near term, we believe is in the five to 11 million per annum range, which would be a significant jump in revenue. And that's really on the low end of the volume, uh, just assuming that we're in a competitive situation where we would be one of multiple producers uh, picked. The other channel we're pushing is workwear for fabrics. And in FY25, we're going to uh, commence the development work around this. We've already started in earnest. Uh, we're working with some textile producers in South Carolina, moving to plant trial phase on this. And we're going to use the uh, we're going to use various fabric types that are organic, synthetic, and blends thereof, uh, and run multiple trials, trying to pinpoint really tear strength, breathability, weight, costs, and flame resistance, and and that's really the four pillars of a successful product. Uh, so we'll be reporting in the coming months on uh, breakthroughs in that space. For Lexigard. Uh, Again, recent regulations have banned substances from FR chemistries and materials, uh, created some near-term opportunities for us. Uh, so in the North American bedding market is the majority of the work we're doing right now. And again, that's in line with our strategy and our core market uh, in bedding. We have several new opportunities we're working right now uh, for placements in the North American market. Um, and again, we've found uh, certain markets like Australia, don't have FR requirements in the mattresses. So it uh, a lion's share of what we work on is going to be North American for this one. Uh, many of the opportunities are for rayon and poly-based materials, fabrics. Barrier, you'll, hear fire, you'll hear barrier fabrics, you'll hear sidewall fabrics, foundation fabrics, and you'll hear the term FR socks. Uh, we're working on all of those and variations of blended materials for those. Uh, to create uh, effective FR barriers for fabrics and fibers that are marginal on the FR side. Uh, we've been through multiple uh, fabric lab, lab scale burns and we've passed the indicative treatments. So in those scenarios, we bring in the customer's target fabric. We do the finishing in our product development lab and then we do the tests in our lab. From there, we move to pilot scale production at our finishing partners, uh, typically our OEM tier one suppliers of fabric to man, uh, mattress manufacturers. We're moving to that phase now to produce pilot scale fabric to make the materials to build test beds. Uh, and so we'll be reporting on mattress burn tests over the next quarter. Uh, but so far, all the results are extremely promising. And we're expecting um, this to be one of the growth vehicles for FY25 for us meeting uh, some of the short-term goals. Uh, we're also in discussion, working through an agreement right now uh, in a contractual partnership with an international supplier to bring a cost-effective FR sock to the U.S. market. So it's a, a high-quality sock produced offshore. It would be treated with our AlexiGuard, uh, giving it superior uh, performance at a cost-effective price. Uh, and the market is ripe for that. Uh, and it would be a buy-sell scenario where they may use our finishing on socks they sell, or we may use their socks and finish them and sell the socks ourselves. Uh, but that presents a nice opportunity in the near term. Uh, and the revenue opportunities in the near term, which will be uh, budgeted for the year, are in the one to three million range. Then beyond that, as this ramps up, uh, it gets significantly larger. Continuing with growth in the core market, uh, beyond those advancements, uh, we've now perfected the chemistry and we are rolling out Alexis Shield. Uh, and again, it's, it's ahead of the regulatory curve, so kind of a bleeding edge FR chemistry. Uh, and it's positioned for the betting space as well. Uh, we have entered an agreement with a top three worldwide brand for exclusive use of Alexi Shield and FR barrier fabrics uh, for many of its high-end mattress lines. Uh, this exclusivity runs into uh, next year, uh, our half two for FY25. Then the obligation is in parallel as we're doing the development work now to work together uh, to deliver passing mattress burns. <clears throat> so uh, starting to build the fabric for those now. Uh, and we use the Alexis Shield barrier fabrics. Once we have those passing results, uh, the obligation is to negotiate supply terms for an adoption. Uh, and we'll be reporting on that agreement and those test results as, as we move forward and, and get 
basically every, everything that indicates it's going to work. So the agreement is we prove the concept, show them pro, uh, successful burns, and they'll make a running change on existing mattress lines. So it's not a long uh, development cycle targeted for a new innovative mattress. It's a solution for mattresses that are already in the market that need uh, a better barrier for materials that have been regulated out. All right, and then looking ahead into FY25, uh, and, and like I said earlier, we're gonna roll out the full business plan um, with the budget and the year-end results uh, in the 4C in the next investor webinar. So we'll go deep there, but tonight we'll just uh, a, a little bit of a precursor for that. So we're moving into the next phase and executing the strategy. Um, we wanna grow revenues aggressively in our core market uh, while also working as a secondary focus through breakthrough markets and adjacents. We've been successful in getting the new team members on now that they're coming up to speed. They're gonna mature in their role and we're expecting significant results out of that. Uh, so, you know, the four main focuses are maintaining our key accounts and sales in North America and that's foundational. And that's really what this year was, even in a down market, uh, saturating the North American betting market and by diversifying the product and customer mix. Uh, we're deep into that. Sales growth through breaking new accounts abroad, Asia Pacific, Latin America, and European betting markets. And the diversified revenue growth from our existing technologies into those adjacent markets. And you'll see that coming from Eclipsis, Del Cool. Alexa Fam, Alexa Guard, and now Alexa Shield. Uh, each team member in, in the business side is responsible for driving development activity, pro proposing terms, and closing sales across all of these areas. We're going to position each member where their skill set is leveraged. Um, we've got one of the new business members is, is a chemist uh, by training and been in the business side for years. Uh, also very astute in technical developments. Um, so we have him positioned very close with a lot of our textile and finishing partners to see a lot of the short-term activities to a close. And then another one of our team members is it sells more at a corporate level and is going to be pushing agreements and globalization of a lot of our products to the other continents mentioned here. Uh, and then we're going to cross sell across that. And, and for a small company and me as CEO, I'm very involved in the sales process and very involved with the customers. And I don't see that changing for any near term season. Um, so I'm going to continue to promote the company, meet with customers and, and drive sales in terms myself as well. So for the FY25 plan, a uh, little background and the sales approach and some of the objectives. Uh, in late 23, after a two-year slump in revenues from a weak betting market, uh, we had to pivot and change our approach to sales. So this led to the recruiting and adding the new team members. Uh, we also added the industry advisor I mentioned earlier, and we went to a researcher late last calendar year and to get a list of names of folks that we could recruit that were industry professionals. Also, that list contained uh, certain vendors that we could go to with our products that could possibly make them. And then also a target list of customers in adjacent markets. And we used a researcher to do our own recruiting. One, one way was to get a, uh, a wider uh, swath of the market and, and players out there that we could connect with. Uh, also to lower costs, not using headhunters to recruit but also using it to generate leads for adjacent markets. So it proved to be very effective and it's gotten us to the point where we are now. It's probably a technique we'll continue to use. And, and really what we did is we used the uh, researcher that came out of a research department from a headhunter. So we skipped the headhunter part and used the research part ourselves. Uh, so I thought it was a very efficient way to broaden our network. For the sales approach, uh, we've hired, now we're training experienced sales execs to do the following sell our products to our current core market betting, and then further saturate, <clears throat> excuse me, North American, our North American customer base. Uh, and, and, you know, that's the lowest hanging fruit for us right now. Beyond that, diversify the product offering in our core market with the other products. So that's still cool eclipses and all the FR product suite we just mentioned. Uh, breaking new counts globally and repeating that same multi-product offering to the core market. In parallel, but a lesser percentage, this comes to discipline, sales will work on selling our existing technologies to non-betting markets, again, adjacencies. 
And then the company will leverage the skill sets and relationships of all stakeholders to open doors for top-down sales in all areas. And our board has been very active recently in opening doors and networking and making introduction for us to top executives in our markets. And it's been very helpful. Um, beyond that, the new team, once they're up to speed and getting meaningful results, we're going to continue to add to that team and bolster our activity to drive more sales into the adjacent markets. Key objectives, double our month over month sales volume from 24, from 500 to a million per month. And that thereabout is the cash positive threshold as long as we control our overhead, which we will. Uh, then beyond that, reach a sustained minimal month over month contracted sales volume of a million dollars minimum. And that's a permanent cash flow position, cash flow positive position. We'll secure long term high volume supply agreements to shore up sustained revenues. Um, in the last several months, you heard multiple agreements get announced. We'll continue announcing those agreements as we sign them and uh, their material. We'll update the ASX regularly and all investors on our successful milestones and reinforce our progress with you all and the market. We'll leverage that momentum and reinvest in the business to grow Alexium to maximum earnings, earnings and evaluation that supports a share price that rewards everyone here. Uh, and that's the plan. And just to put a bow on what we've said tonight, uh, watch what we're doing over the coming FY25 season and what we're doing in FR. Uh, we're quite excited about it. And we've got some nice tailwinds in that market that are leading to a lot of activity for short-term adoption. Uh, and, you know, and that's because folks have been regulated into a problem and we have a solution for it. Uh, so it's uh, very fortunate that our past developments position us this way. With that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Simon to close and then we'll take questions. Actually, we'll just move to questions, Simon, I guess, and then we'll close. Uh, so, uh, yes, please, Billy. That, that'd be great. I think you're, you were fielding the question, so I'll... Uh, yes. I'll, so uh, we, really, we really only have one question and it's a, um, a question on slide five for the strategic pathway. Yeah. It's uh, where has cash flow positive gone on the strategic pathway for for 2025 to 27, given it's not achieved in either FY 23 or 24. I think the answer there is just that we're we're not saying we're dropping it. It just wasn't achieved in the in the target year, so we will carry that forward into FY 25. That's exactly right. Anything you want to add there? No, it's uh, it's going to stay on the goals until it's achieved and sustained and no longer a topic. Um, simple as that. Yeah. Question. Then um, there weren't any other real questions, just uh, comments on, you know, a little disappointment in the progress we've made to date. Yep. Well, uh, sorry for the disappointment. Uh, I can assure you the team here is giving it everything we have. Um, you know, it's a small team. It's a lean team. Uh, the plan and the strategy change that's come over the last 20 months since I've been here is working. It is moving us forward. You're not seeing it in the numbers yet, but I can promise you that's coming. Uh, and we're doing everything we can to deliver those results. Uh, we haven't let up at all. Uh, we remain committed to deliver the results for all the shareholders and the employees. Um, so we all have the same goal to make this company a wild success and to deliver the return on your investment. And Billy, I might just add to that. Uh, we very recently had a the annual board meeting conducted in the States where the Australian based directors and the U S based directors come together uh, to spend three days going through the plans, working with the management team uh, and really reviewing the year that's passed and the year ahead. Um, the takeaways from that meeting for me as the, the chair and, and the representative of the, of the largest shareholder is that I do think that the management team we have in place today is the strongest team that we've fielded. Uh, I think the technologies that we have uh, developed and are proprietary to the company are truly unique and differentiated. 
And importantly, the sales uh, strategy and the sales team are focused and qualified to execute on the plan. Uh, in the past, we've had good technology, but the commercialization piece has struggled. Um, and that candidly comes down to the quality of the team we had around the commercialization of the product. Um, we've now got the right team in place to address that commercialization phase. At the same time, uh, there have been some developments in the marketplace, uh, which Billy outlined today on the FR side of the business, uh, which uh, really do play very significantly in our favour and provide us with a very immediate customer need that we're addressing. And we are uh, expecting, uh, not just hoping, but expecting that over the, the very near future, we'll be making some significant progress on the FR side of the business with large existing customers. And with that, uh, I'll pass it off to Billy. Um, we have Simon, the fourth, sorry. I'm sorry, before you pass it off to Billy, there's one more question that came through. So when oh. you're finished. I was just gonna say that, um, you know, we will have another uh, update for people in conjunction with the 4C um, and then the annual results uh, at the end of August. So mm -hmm. you'll be hearing from us uh, almost monthly over the next couple of months. Um, we uh, are hoping to bring you real-time updates uh, on a number of the uh, uh, account areas that we're working on closely at the moment. And we are hopeful that uh, sometime in the next couple of months, we will have some significant progress to announce. And with that, I'll pass it back to Lisa. Okay. Um, Billy, one other question is, is the shoe project still active? Yes, uh, moving slowly, but yes, we're still active. Uh, we have another shoe moving to NC State for testing uh, in the next, it's going to be in the next four weeks, uh, depending on when they can schedule us. Uh, and yes, we are active on that, just moving slowly. And you know, once we get any meaningful results, we'll report that. Okay, I think that's it for questions. All right. Well, I'll uh, I'll say a few words and leave it to Simon. But uh, thank you all for joining, and uh, thank you for your support of Alexium. Uh, we'll, as Simon said, we'll continue to keep you posted and updated on all uh, forward progress and results. Uh, and with that, I hope everybody has a good day there in Australia and a good evening in the States. Uh, Simon. Thank you, Billy. And with that, uh, we'll wind up today's presentation. Thank you very much for your time and your attendance. And we look forward to staying in touch over the coming months. Thank you. Take care.